Today I want to talk about what to do when we're struggling to overcome sin. Because I've noticed that a lot of us as Christians are trying to overcome sin on our own. We may be involved in churches with discipleship programs that tell us we need other human beings outside of us to help us grow with God. And in some ways that is true. We do grow in the Lord through fellowship and learning and growing together. And I just want to say that God will finish whatever he started in us, but the most important step to that happening is allowing him to. And when we are overly tuned in to other people outside of us, it's hard to hear his still small voice and to allow him in to transform us. And we can often end up falling back into our own willpower, thinking there's some series of steps we need to do in order to overcome sin we may be struggling with in our lives. But I'm here to tell you, we only overcome sin by his spirit working within us. The same spirit that overcame death, sin, and the grave and rose into new life. It's by the Lord's power that our flesh is crucified and transformed and we are conformed to his image. And often when God helps us overcome sin and is transforming us, it may be a difficult process to let go of in the beginning, but... I think the most difficult part of that process is actually inviting him in and asking him to help us. Because the pride of our flesh and our own will goes back to that original sin. And so the Lord didn't just die to help us overcome sin, he died to help us rise into new life in him. So that we could overcome our entire fallen nature and our flesh. And some months back, maybe six months ago, I heard the Lord speak to my heart, crucify your flesh and follow me. And I thought, what does that actually mean, Lord? Because I've heard people say it, but I wasn't sure I really understood it. And that question took me on a journey to overcoming my flesh more and more with and in the Lord, because I had become really caught up in the institutional church and system that told me all sort of prescriptive list of things I needed to do to be a good Christian. And in those spaces, I found many Christians with decades in the Lord who were still struggling with sin. And that felt confusing to me. And what also happened is a lot of people tried to force discipleship on me, at which point I would usually run from each church because here's the truth. No human being is a perfect mentor. And it's okay to have mentors, but you should seek mentors that you feel led to yourself. And no one should impose their mentorship on you. It is my firm belief that Christ is the true head of the church. And that as a body, we are very disempowered and passive as believers, expecting one human being to sort of carry that crown and that weight in our congregations and assemblies, which doesn't really create a very healthy or balanced body in the end. And people end up backsliding after having decades in Christ and leaving the church because we're legalistically trying to overcome sin by our own willpower. In order to truly overcome sin, we need the Spirit of the Lord, the same one who defeated death in the grave and rose again on the third day, bringing us into eternal life with him. Right, like 2 Timothy 2.11 says, For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. But we are called to deny ourselves and our flesh, not by our own willpower, but by the power of his holy, mighty spirit working within us. And when we allow him to, he will finish the good thing that he began in us. And that's a lifelong process, friends. Recently, the Lord helped me overcome a sin that I have been struggling with for decades. And I feel like his spirit working in me was lessening it little by little over the last two years. And he was very gentle with me. And this particular sin was just really tricky for me. It was connected to things I had survived and been victimized by in this world. And so the Lord was very gentle with me. I think the first step is allowing his gentleness into our hearts because we can become so harsh and critical of ourselves and fall so deeply into shame that we avoid God's transforming power working within us or look to flawed human beings to perfect us when only he can. One thing that can be really helpful that is a sort of an action we take, it's more of an inaction, 
is all different kinds of fasting. I personally like Daniel fasting because my body needed something more gentle, where it's just like a strict plant-based fast. But whatever type of fasting we do, we want to invite the Lord into that process. Fasting isn't about how good we are as Christians. It's just sort of an intentional time of prayer and communion with the Lord. And I have experienced absolutely miraculous, profound transformations. And it's something that I use all the time that has led to an accelerated path of growth that has helped me to give more and more territory within me to the Lord so that he can do his work in me and fill me with more of his peace and love and goodness and set me free of all the chains of bondage that I was yoked by this world to. And so when we're overcoming sin, we want to remember that it's not about shame. It's not about beating ourselves up for being flawed human beings. It's simply about the process of regeneration that starts when we first receive the Holy Spirit and continues throughout our lifetimes as we grow deeper and deeper in the Lord. You know, a lot of the times we can mistake spiritual warfare simply for our own flesh. But whatever triggers happen within us, we can take them to the Lord so that he can purify our hearts, make more space for himself within us, and we can hear his guidance and begin to step into more and more of the freedom that he already paid the price for on the cross. And so, in conclusion, the process of overcoming sin is really a process of surrendering more and more of ourselves to the Lord. Not so much a doing or a trying, but a letting go and letting him in to move and work in us. I just want to pray that whatever you're struggling with, you take that privately to the Lord and deal with your flesh with him. Knowing that there may be a kicking and screaming process to let go of it, but once you finally do and let him work in you, especially if you had fasting to the mix, you're going to find amazing results. Amazing things can happen and the Lord will deliver you. And that isn't often like a violent looking process. Generally, I'll do a fast and the seven day Daniel fast I did recently where he helped me overcome a really intense sin. The process was actually very gentle once I let go. And then I noticed all of a sudden this sort of inner shift that was profound and deep, yet also very subtle. And that's for me how God's work often is. Like Paul said, should I come to you with a rod or a spirit of gentleness? And the Holy Spirit's work in us is very gentle. The crushing and the struggle and the suffering often comes when we're resisting him. And faith itself is less of an action or a muscle that you build and more of a letting go, a relaxation of that inner tension, of that sort of gripping we're doing in our hearts, bracing ourselves against the world and resisting God's work within us. And so I pray that this video blessed you and that you come into deeper communion with the Lord and surrender the things that you're struggling with in this life to him and his power and his spirit so that you may be transformed and conformed to his image, set free and move more and more towards the promised land, the greater life of thriving in him that he has always had planned for you since he knit you in your mother's womb. God bless you and keep you. I'll see you in the next video, friends. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you find yourself struggling with that and need a little bit more guidance, I've created a free ebook, Three Simple Steps to Resting in God's Love. If you click the link below and subscribe to my email list, you'll receive that automatically. Take care.